Welcome to St. James Catholic Church. To our guests with us, we are honored by your presence and appreciate your participation. Please stand as we sing our processional hymn, number 646, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say, number 646. <laughs> and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we gather today on this, the Lord's Day, we come to celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. We continue our Lenten journey. We strive to see the crucifixion. So as we gather, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving has shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bound down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
like to invite those who will take part in our children's liturgy of the word to please come forward. How many of y'all have ever been so thirsty you couldn't wait to have a drink of water? Isn't that a good feeling? You finally get, your thirst gets quenched, some water goes in, you just feel all new and refreshed. And that's what we're going to hear about. The Samaritan woman at the well is thirsting, but she thinks she's thirsting for water when really she's thirsting for Christ. And that's why we are all here today. So we want you to go with our blessings, our love. We want you to hear more about the Samaritan woman and how we can be our thirst will always be quenched with the love and mercy of God, okay? Who's never, ever, ever held the book. You never did. I have not. You have not. <laughs> you all want to do paper, rock, scissors? But no. You're a little, go ahead, lift that up high. We'll get you next week, all right? Head that way. Raise it up high. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? A little more and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massah and the Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us for Christ while we were still helpless died at the appointed time of, for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. <laughs> be with you. With Reading from our Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? And Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him like a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. And the woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are writing, saying you do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, 
The hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with the woman. But still no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her jar and went into the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, In four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of your word, for we have seen for ourselves and heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. The third week of Lent. So how's your Lenten discipline, your retreat going? Have you been able to fast, as suggested by Pope Francis, fast from the 11 things that prevent us from having hope, being reconciled, from being prayerful and trusting in God? and having that personal relationship with Jesus. Well, if you're still struggling a bit, we might take heart in what Father Shane told the school children at Mass on Thursday and kind of related to, to sporting events, that it's not so much how we start but how you finish. And my people, we have time to finish very strong. And then I might suggest that we get rid of this. I hold in my hand a remote control. Sure, it's nice and would be good to give up TV and video games and that kind of stuff. 
But I'm suggesting at this point that we give up everything that remotely controls us. You and me. Let go of the remote. And let God have control. We've all heard the phrase, let go and let God. And it means surrendering to God. And it means making a decision to stop playing God and let God be God in our lives. Let go and let God. We're beginning the third week of Lent. We're in the middle of Lent and maybe still somewhat holding on. And yet, still being asked to take the time to think a little deeper about our original commitments of Lent, of prayer and sacrifices. Maybe ask ourselves, have we just lent ourselves for this short period of time to God? Or are we beginning to learn more about ourselves that will enable us to let go of something that has its grip on us? Will we be able to continue after the season of Lent to let go for what we consider to be the better part of us. In today's gospel, an unnamed woman comes to the well to fill her jar with water. And oddly, she never filled the jar. In fact, she left the water jar, as John points out. She left her empty jar, her empty life, and instead allowed God to enter, to fill her life through Jesus. She let go of her old ways of living that Jesus had opened her eyes to and was filled with spirit and truth. She didn't need her jar anymore. She became filled within. The living water she received did, in fact, become a fountain within her, as Jesus suggested. And she had to tell everybody. You know, during Lent, there's a period of time during Holy Week where we empty the baptismal font and the holy water fonts at the doors of the church. And it occurred to me that maybe today's gospel is being brought to light. Lent is a dry period. Our jars are to be emptied. We're being asked to empty ourselves, turn off what remotely controls us. We are two are to come to the well for the living water. We're being asked to recognize how full of ourselves maybe we have become. and learn to refresh ourselves in spirit and truth, to receive the living water Jesus offers each one of us, to let go and to let God's will be done in us. We have just four short weeks of Lent left. May we resolve further 
to let go and let God be in control that we may be able to say what Jesus told the woman in today's gospel, that what we understand is what we worship. We worship God in spirit and truth. And that we can proclaim as the Samaritans did to the woman. No longer does our faith depend on your story, for we have heard for ourselves and we know that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. invite our catechumens and candidates who are working toward the celebration of the Easter sacraments to please join me along with their sponsors. Good morning. My friends, for many, many months, those who stand before us through <clears throat> prayer and study, reflection and discernment have been preparing to receive the Easter sacraments in five weeks. Today we bring before them the first scrutiny. For like the Samaritan woman, indeed, like for all of us, our first step in our own conversion is to rid ourselves by the power of Christ of all sin and all darkness. So as they grow ever closer and have encountered Christ, not only over these months, but in their lives, let us pause quietly and pray for them, that their continued pilgrimage will be successful, that our prayer to die today include their own scrutiny of their own lives will bring great blessing, benefit, and grace. So let us pray silently for them. Soon to be my brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you now to silently pray for yourselves. Let us pray for these candidates and catechumens, the elect, whom the church has confidently chosen May they successfully complete their long preparation and at the Paschal Feast find Christ in his sacraments. That like the woman of Samaria, our elect may review their lives before Christ, acknowledge their sins. Let us pray to the Lord. That they may be freed from the spirit of mistrust that deters people from following Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, that while awaiting the gift of God, may they, they may long with all their hearts for the living water that brings eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord that by accepting the Son of God as their teacher, they may become true worshipers of the Father in spirit and in truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
that those whose lives are empty for want of the word of God may come to the gospel of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, That all of us may learn from Christ to do the Father's will in love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Our merciful Father, through your Son, you revealed your mercy to the woman of Samaria. And moved by that same care, you have offered salvation to all sinners. Look favorably on these before you, who desire to become your adopted children through the power of your sacraments. Free them from the slavery of sin and from Satan's crushing yoke. Exchange the gentle yoke of Jesus. Protect them in every danger, that they may serve you faithfully in peace and joy and render you thanks forever. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in your merciful wisdom, you touched the heart of the sinful woman, taught her to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Now by your power, free these, your servants, from the cunning of Satan, as they draw near to the fountain of living water. Touch their hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit, that they may come to know the Father in true faith, which expresses itself in love, for you live and reign forever and ever. My friends, you go now to continue to be teachers of Christ that come, students of Christ that come to us from the sacred scriptures. For us as a family of faith, it will be a great day of joy when you join us at the altar of the Lord. My friends, Go in peace. Offertory hymn is number 399, Deep Within, number 399.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks. And with the angels, praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. No. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the 
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we give us our temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace and love. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am the Lord. Communion hymn is number 851, I Receive the Living God, number 851. <laughs>
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the human bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in this mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Father Martin, Deacon Bill, and all of us here at St. James, we welcome any guests that are here. You're always welcome here at St. James, and we do hope to see more of you. If you would please be seated for just a moment. I am making this announcement at all the masses this weekend, and you'll be receiving an email uh, later this afternoon. I'd like to inform you that effective on June 21st, 2017, Archbishop Joseph E. Kurtz has appointed me as administrator of St. Raphael Parish in Louisville, while remaining as the associate vocation director for the Archdiocese. I am very humbled and honored to have been given this assignment. St. Raphael Parish currently serves a little over 970 families, has a school grades kindergarten through eighth grade with a little over 311 students. I am very excited about this new assignment and I'm looking forward to serving as their good shepherd. This new assignment also brings some pain and sadness with it because I hope you know I love serving you as your associate pastor. Since day one, you, the faithful of St. James, have welcomed me with open arms. And I could not have asked for a better first assignment following ordination. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your love, for your prayers, and your support. Please continue to pray for me that I will be a good and faithful servant and pray for the people of St. Raphael that they will welcome me with open arms just as you have and that together we will continue to know, love, and serve our Lord now and forever. Amen. So just some clarifying points because some of you may have just have heard I'm leaving and you think it's next weekend. <laughs> we still have three more months together, so don't rush me out, okay? June 21st is when this takes effect. Some of you have heard the word administrator. What happens typically when an associate pastor is given his own parish for the first time, the archbishop typically appoints them as an administrator, and then a few months to a year later installs him formally as a pastor. The reason we're making this announcement a little earlier than normal and the remaining announcements, appointments will come at the end of the month, beginning of April, at St. Raphael, next week, they're finishing up the hiring process for a new principal. And as many of you can understand, the pastor-principal relationship is key. It's very crucial. And so they want to be very transparent and open and want me to be a part of that uh, hire uh, so that St. Raphael will continue to grow and flourish with a new pastor and a new principal. I'm very thrilled to be uh, keeping the uh, position of associate vocation director. That has brought me great joy as well. And I know there are many in this parish who are discerning a call to priesthood and to religious life. So please continue to pray for me. This is not easy. Even though there is such excitement and energy, it will very, be very difficult uh, to leave Hardin County. So in these next three months, let's continue to pray for one another. Let's continue to, to grow in our love of Christ. And as I have mentioned to Father Martin the previous two Masses, and I'll say it to you again, as I have from the beginning, with three months left, I will continue to give you everything that I have. So please pray for me and the people of St. Raphael and all of the church. God bless you. I think that probably all of us has know, known that uh, sooner or later this day would come. 
and I've had a little bit more time to adjust to it than uh, probably most of you. I, I think I can say with confidence, I know this, that uh, probably of all of us, I stand number one in my love for you. And I know that all of us are in the same place. So you will be sorely, sorely, sorely missed. I've shared with Father that, and he knows this, I'm familiar with the book as well, I've mentioned to you on probably more than one occasion that Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen is one of my heroes. And early on in my priesthood, I uh, read one of his books, The Life of the Priest is Not His Own. So we go where, hopefully, the will of God takes us and the Holy Spirit directs us, even if we don't like it. Even if we don't like it. You will go, the thing to remember, uh, to St. Raphael, you'll go there because they need you. And you will go with the depth of the heart of the Good Shepherd, and you will be an awesome pastor to them. As Father said, we still have uh, some time to be together, so I recommend let's just enjoy our time together. We'll have a time to say a proper uh, thanks and farewell to you. Uh, until then, uh, we'll look forward to Easter, and we will enjoy our time with you. God bless you, brother. much, Father. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. The recessional hymn is number 392, Lord, who throughout these 40 days, number 392. Mm -hmm. 